roll, and they're gonna do just that. He spots the first one that's rolling down, and Abe, it's one kill, and Splice will be here in a month's time. They will qualify the first of the NA teams to do so. Grenade out. And Splice will close out map number one. Do you still remember Splice? It's been a while, hasn't it? Over three years since their last official game, 1,206 days to be exact. Splice was a team that has housed some of the best players in NA, so how did an org that was synonymous with NACS for years fail to succeed and eventually leave the scene with nothing to show for it? And how did a sticker rise five times in price in a month and fall the same amount a month after? Let's talk about it. Splice is an org that popped onto the scene in 2015. In CS, they picked up the old SKDC roster, which consisted of Ocean, Els, Wabbit, and Desi, who was a stand-in at the time. After a short two-month stint, the roster consisted of Slemmy, Peter, Akis, Ruru, and Stewie2k. This team also wouldn't last long, which is nothing uncommon for Splice's time in CS. I could go through every roster change that has happened, but I feel like half of NA has played for Splice at some point. Even Shroud stood in for Splice when they needed to fill a spot for Esports Arena. And in typical Splice fashion, they were knocked out after one series. Splice never had that breakout tournament. They consistently lost to the Tier 1 teams in NA and they never had a chance internationally. Back in 2017, which is the best iteration in my opinion, their success relied on Roka popping heads, headshotting and such, as some would say. Against international play, this team never stood a chance. Sorry, man. So how did Splice manage three years in CS if the team was consistently terrible, couldn't win internationally, and rarely took maps off of Tier 1 NA teams? What was their secret? To start off, Splice was far from a small organization. By 2016, they fielded teams in CS, League of Legends, Call of Duty, various fighting games, and StarCraft II. In 2017, a Halo roster was also picked up. Splice had their hands in a ton of esports as a massive brand, but the straw that broke the camel's back was Overwatch. For those who don't remember or weren't around at the time, the Overwatch League was an insane pitch at the time. You may be familiar with the COD World League, and that's essentially the same model. The initial buy-in for the Overwatch League was $20 million, and that was bottom dollar. Since teams are region-based, the more expensive regions like New York and LA were purchased at a premium. Splice dropped all of their teams outside of one of their StarCraft II players in 2018. They made a deal with Overactive Media and picked up their new Overwatch roster under the name Toronto Defiant. That is the end of the Splice that we knew. Splice never had a team that could perform on a high level. That's the bottom line. They never had a roster that could make waves. So why was there a sticker crisis? All of this hype came before Splice actually pulled out of CS. We are going to look at one of the most ridiculous manipulation attempts I've seen in CS and they worked. The team was never really supposed to make it to a major. They were outclassed by other top teams in NA. Through some miracle though, their group to qualify consisted of CLG, Vexed, and SK. This isn't Brazilian SK. This is Pimp and Magisk SK. Splice beating CLG in a very close game was massive, and they continued that momentum with a great showing against Vexed. For the first and last time, Splice would get stickers to a major. One major appearance, one major sticker. This is a unique opportunity. You could get a sticker that will likely never be released again. But people took it too far. Just because a team will likely never make it to another major, doesn't mean it's the next I buy power. It was strangely overhyped when we look at it now. But this was actually quite common back in the day. Everyone wanted to know what the next side by power was, and they weren't talking about match fixing. All the prices for Katavisa 2014 stickers were already going up at an exponential rate, but I by power was in the lead. It had been seven months since the I by power team got indefinitely banned. 
People wanted to know how they could make millions of dollars. Kinguin, Phase, and Splice. Those are the stickers I have seen brought up as the new I buy power. There's probably others I don't remember as I didn't even play CS at the time. I just watched it. How many people kept falling for the next I buy power trick is a miracle to me. Manipulation number two. The sticker was clearly manipulated in the past. The Steam accounts that I found don't currently have any stickers in them, which is unfortunate. Where I found these accounts though is way back in the day when a Reddit user linked, apparently, accounts that were used to manipulate the market. Now this is four accounts before storage units. That's a maximum of 4,000 stickers. They can't possibly manipulate the market. Well, this is back in 2016. Big investors weren't as confident that this was sustainable and cashing out wasn't nearly as streamlined. Basically, 4,000 sticker purchases actually did have an effect back in the day. With all the hype around the sticker, it's no surprise some people were tricked into thinking it was natural. Moving along into the second price spike we saw, this is the reason I really want to get this video finished, because it's ridiculous. It's time for a CS investing conspiracy story that either resulted in a small group of people buying up all the stickers or a community push. I can't find information about this time, and I wouldn't have access to who purchased them, but I can see the result. 2017. CS is growing, Splice is still as trash as they were before, and China might be gaining official access to CSGO. Looking back on this time, people thought that China would play a ton and they would take over. Unfortunately, they thought that China would compete in tournaments, not compete with bargains. So what sticker do we buy if China gets access to CS and the market? Surely it has to be Splice, right? Here are the reasons. Are you ready for it? Number 1. Yellow is considered a prestigious color, therefore Chinese players will want a yellow sticker. 2. Snakes are a symbol of fortune and for various reasons related to that, will go up in price. This is the general quote that can be found around a few forums that were posted in 2017, the same time the sticker had another spike. And for the third, not really manipulation, but after all of this hype in 2018, Splice finally pulled out of CS. Even though the sticker should have died on the spot, I feel like after all the hype for the last few years, they may have seen this as another chance. And it was a good chance to take, as the foil sticker tripled on the Steam market. The hollow sticker also did very well. As always though, the prices will never stay in this situation, and they did fall. Lots of money was lost, again. As of today, the splice stickers are mostly forgotten. It has been years and prices are still lower than what they were in 2018 when Splice pulled out. It's crazy to think that after 3 years, all of the people that bought during the hype are still hurting. I was hoping to find some proof that the Summit 1G Molly fail had something to do with the prices, but I can't find anything solid. The Molly fail happened just after the Major, so maybe that's why the high prices lasted so long, but I can't find any noticeable price increase. Either way, I think what I found has been much better. It was fun to look into multiple manipulation attempts on the same sticker that actually worked. If you have any other suggestions for this series, leave them in the comments. That was the story of the Splice Manipulation fiasco. Until next time.